Hey, good morning. 7.30, Saturday. It's time for my faculty meeting. All right, so uh, we're plugging away here, developing the framework for a failing component. We're uh, looking at some existing content, and we're going to now move on to uh, organizing solids and lines and a family editor, and then we're going to actually go into start to create some families and, and use some of these methods uh, to do that. So um, I've got two files open. I have open um, the gen uh, a generic model that I uh, created new, and I have open this existing RFA, this existing family, uh, a desk. I have this, this family open, and uh, as you can see, um, I have this new family that I'm going to create. We're going to actually try to emulate the same thing. Um, but there are two examples from uh, the new and the uh, existing, so I have to keep two open. But let's just uh, read verbatim and move on. We've got a lot to get to. We haven't even gotten to the construction phase yet. And you know, I want to get into the MEP as soon as possible. All right, so organizing solids and lines in a family editor. When you get beyond the basic geometric controls in families that are dictated by datum objects and dimensions, there are three other ways you can organize the solids and symbolic lines you create in a family. Object styles and subcategories, visibility settings, and materials. Each of these three methods control of control is directly related to the 3D and 2D content you generate. In other words, you must apply these settings directly to the solids and lines in a family. We will first review each method and then you will learn about family modeling techniques in the next section. Now just keep in mind that when you're going through this, you're going to have to remember that one uh, organizational chart, hierarchy chart that I, that I have shown you over and over. And let's see if I can get it on one shot. Sometimes querying it. Here it is, Bob Cross, right? This takes us right to Bob Cross's uh, Twitter, or is this going to take us somewhere else? Let's get this over here. If you remember this, uh, oops, sorry. If you remember uh, this chart, oh, he's got that up on Autodesk 360. If you remember this chart, all of these uh, overrides are going to apply when you start uh, changing and applying visibility settings to line work and materials. Uh, and, and object styles and subcategories and all that, all that stuff that goes into uh, displaying your content directly. So that's why I just wanted to go on a little bit of a, a, a tangent there to discuss that. So uh, each of these three methods of control is directly related to the 3D and 2D content you generate. In other words, you must apply these things directly to the solids and lines in a family. We will first review each method and then you will learn about family modeling techniques in the next section. Using object styles and subcategories. Let's get back to the exercise file and discuss object styles and subcategories. As mentioned earlier in this chapter, Rivet has a predefined number of family categories. These categories define how elements display, schedule, export, and so on. Even though these main object categories cannot be modified, you can create subcategories for model annotation and imported objects. Although you can use subcategories to control the visibility of some part of the family, keep in mind that all that the detail level and visibility settings already manage visibility. The subcategories are most important when you are exporting your project because each category and subcategory is permitted its own CAD layer and IFC classification. Industry foundation class, uh, and then out to the CAD uh, layering schemes. So it goes and shows uh, an export uh, dialog box on this particular file. So let me go, let me go to export from the file pull down, and we go to the CAD formats. And if we go to DWG, it's AutoCAD. DXF is a drawing exchange file. Um, 
to a uh, DXF viewer, like a third uh, or this DXF viewer, if you don't have AutoCAD. DGN is MicroStation, and ACIS, SAT, is Dassault Systems, a uh, really huge French company. Uh, and you, 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 can do your, uh, you can do your research on them. Dassault System, that's their native file format for their program. So I'm going to export this to a DWG. We're going to get a dialog box. Uh, current view, current sheet only. In session export. And then if I hit next, I'll give it a, a 3D view. I can send it to documents. And now that CAD drawing has been exported. So now, If I was to go and do that one more time and give you and show you the options, uh, which I didn't do, let me see here. Uh, blah 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 blah. The ellipses. Here we go. So as you can see, when you're uh, exporting a two DWG or DXF, you have an export setup dialog box, and we talked about this. Uh, there are layering standards. Uh, whoever's receiving this, right? Um, and uh, we talked about how uh, we can export category properties by layer and overrides by entity. And we went through this in the earlier chapters. Uh, but if, you, uh, if it's being exported to CAD in such a way that you will need to associate objects with granular layer settings, creating and assigning subcategories to elements is necessary. Although it is best not to rely on subcategories to manage visibility. We will show you how to create a new subcategory in the exercise file and then assign geometry to it. In your exercise file, switch to the Manage tab and choose Object Styles in the Object Styles dialog box. Click the New button and create a new subcategory named Tables. All right, so before we exit out of this, we just have to remember that um, well, for coordination purposes and for folks that aren't using uh, Reddit, and to continue along with the workflow process, there are going to be times when you send your DWG files uh, or post them to a project uh, portal. And then folks are going to use those to derive information and continue along with either the design or with uh, fabrication drawings, chop drawings. And you want to be speaking the same language. So when they receive them, uh, they're going to receive them in a format that they're, they're, uh, that's native to them. And uh, there are a lot of standards um, that vary from office to office. And then there are standards that um, are agreed upon in a consensus, in a general consensus. And as you can see, these are uh, some of them. Um, now, again, um, this is so that there's a smooth transition from Revit to AutoCAD. Uh, and this is going to make a, a difference uh, for the for the individual that receive or group that receives the file. So, uh, not to spend too much time on that, let's go back to the reference level of the new family that we're creating. Go to manage. Go to uh, uh, materials or object styles. I'm sorry. Go to object styles and create a new subcategory called tables. New modify subcategories. New subcategory. We're going to call this one tables. Subcategory of furniture because I used the furniture template uh, to, to start the family, our FT file. Reddit family template. Now I hope my uh, I hope my lawyer isn't watching this broadcast. Uh, this has been uh, recorded in front of a, hopefully this hasn't been recorded in front of a live, live audience. But you know me, first thing in the morning. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I like to have my cigarettes. All right, so uh, new category, new subcategory table, subcategory of furniture, it's the only selection we have. And let's just hit OK. So now, model objects, category, furniture. And then there are subcategories within. So now, let's just hold that thought. 
Remember that unless you specifically need to isolate tables from other types of furniture in your project, you should not create too many subcategories but because doing so creates uh, an opportunity for inconsistency. What if someone else on your team created a different table family and added a subcategory called table? When both families load into a project, you will have two subcategories, table and table. Subcategories must be assigned to solid geometry or symbolic lines in the family in order to be used in the project environment. We will discuss this in the modeling techniques in the family editor section later in this chapter. Assigning visibility settings. The time it takes for Revit to generate or regenerate a view depends on how much stuff in the view needs to be displayed. When you are building smaller parts for, uh, of a larger component or if the elements are visible in certain or, uh, orientations, you should assign those elements to reveal themselves only at certain level of detail or in certain views. Doing so prevents the software from managing more information than necessary and helps you keep your views uncluttered. The Revit Model Content Style Guide, previously provided, uh, published by Autodesk, lists guidelines for assigning geometry to the three detail levels available in project views. So, let's just get out of here for a second. And if you remember, I'll go back to this existing RFA, the detail level, coarse, medium, and fine. It doesn't have much of an impact on this um, desk, but it does on other items, like if you remember walls, if you remember if, uh, let's see if I can, I don't, I really can't do it here, but if you remember when we, uh, we drew a wall, you saw that on the course, you would only see the outline of the wall, and as you change the display to medium and to fine, you would start to see the layers that make up that wall, and it's the same concept with uh, symbolic information, like symbolic lines and symbolic annotations and stuff. Whereas uh, a receptacle, for example, maybe a 3D gem box or 1900 box recessed into a wall in uh, 3D and elevation and section. But uh, in plan, it would use a 2D symbol for a, a quadruplex receptacle. Um, and you would, um, you would use less resource than having to display that in, um, in all of its glory. So if that view was set to course, the course display parameter would be displaying the receptacle and drawing it from the receptacle family. Now the same thing holds true for uh, the water closets. If you had sculpted and swept and revolved a complex uh, blend or, or, or shape or form into this family, um, it's going to require resources to gener regenerate and render it and show it on the display. And in 2D, you may not need to show that. You may only need to show it symbolically uh, as a, a 2D element, just like the receptacle. So you'll utilize less computer resources, less memory. All right, so um, that being said, um, we're going to discuss a little bit more of that in the following chapters. Now, um, the Revit Model Content Style Guide um, uh, states that if the geometry is smaller than one foot or 300 millimeters, set the detail level to fine. If it's between one and three feet to medium and larger than three feet to coarse. I guess it's a good rule of thumb, but um, we'll have to just um, experience that for ourselves. So to practice using these visibility settings, download and open the C15 desk project, RVT. Now I have the family open, the desk family, but I don't have the RVT, I don't have the, uh, the project file open. So um, that's in the book's companion website. So let's do that. Let's open up um, uh, 3D desk uh, or desk project RVT. Revenue Structural Lecture, whatever you download them, um, Family Editor, Desk Project. Let's open up this one. Seven forty-five. Most of the project managers are probably you know, still waiting. They're not even woken up yet. They're out late with their clients at the restaurants solidifying their deals, right? So uh, 
Again, where a uh, early bird gets the worm. All right, so here's the uh, here's the project for the desk. Let's take a look at level one. Let's take a look at this in 3D. What do they got going on here? All right, so as you can see, um, these are the. Uh, I can close this one. So we still have a family open here, the generic family that we uh, use to start a, a piece of furniture. And we have this furniture project over here that has a couple desks in it. So now, we look at different detail level assignments. The simple project contains the default desk RFA, which I just had open, that is loaded into the Revit default project template. We've created a working sheet in which th uh, three 3D views have been placed with different detail level properties. As you can see them in the project browser, one, two, and three. And then you have three other course medium and fine. Okay, so um, notice that all of the drawing faces in hardware are displayed in every view, despite the detail level assignments, which three 3D views have been placed with different detail level properties. Okay, well then let's look at 3D course, 3D fine, 3D medium, 3D view one, 3D view two, 3D view, 3D view three. Say that three times fast. Okay, so uh, notice that all the draw faces and hardware are displayed in every view despite the detail level assignments. Okay, now there's a bid manager note. Many of us have downloaded Reddit families from a number of widely available online sources to get a first design pass at a piece of content. BIM object, Revit City, and Orgy, and the Orgy forms, forms are all great places to start, but when you download a family component, take a moment to make sure that the detail level and orientation of detail are appropriate. Double-click any of the viewports you see in the sample sheet view to activate a view. Any of the uh, sample sheet. Let's go to the sample sheet and double-click any of the uh, viewports to see uh, you see in the to, uh, in the sample sheet activated view. Well, I did. I double clicked on it. Oh, cancel out of there. I double clicked on an entity. Now so that view is activated. Select one of the desks. Three D course. Select one of the desks, then from the contextual tag in the ribbon, click Edit Family. You should be in a 3D view once the desk RFA, which it is, opens. If you are not, activate the default 3D view. Select the two, front, the two sets of draw handles. The two sets of draw handles. Well, there's one set, and there's two, holding control. Press the control key to select multiple items. From the contextual tab in the ribbon, choose visibility settings. From the contextual tab in the ribbon, under the mode panel, visibility settings. And we talked about this, and that's why um, we're going to be getting into visibility graphic overrides and all the uh, parameters that go into views a lot. That was one of the toughest hurdles visibility graphics and and that goes without saying in uh, broadcasting or conveying information or articulation so let's just read to the uh, tooltip specifies the views and detail levels for displaying family geometry in a model when an element is created by a family the geometry of the element changes depending on the current view right based on what the view visibility setting is detail level. Oops. Let me hover over it again. Oops, wrong one. In a planar elevation view, you may want to see a 2D representation of the element. 
In a 3D view, you may want a fully detailed 3D representation of the element. In the Family Element Visibility Settings dialog box, which is what this is, uncheck the boxes for coarse and medium because these handles are smaller than one foot. They should be seen only when a view's detail level is set to fine. Also uncheck the left-right option because viewing the handles from the side might not be that valuable in a section or interior ele elevation view. So shouldn't be seen in coarse and medium because these uh, L his handles are smaller than a foot. So let's, that's in the view one course level. Notice that the box for the plan RCP option is unchecked. This is appropriate for the desk because little more than the surface of the top of the desk needs to show up in the plan. The legs, the hardware, and even the faces of the drawers do not need to show up in the plan. Click OK to close the dialog box. Let's make sure I got it. Front, back. Wants to do this again. So let's just hit OK. And let's take a look at the. Uh, this, why do they make us do it from a sheet? That's ridiculous. They should just let us. Well, I guess that's the only way to do it, I guess. So let's take a look and see what we see now. Let's just get a, uh, a left. I see it in the left. I see it in the right. I see the handles in the left. I see it in the right. 3D view one. I see it. This is set. This view. Uh, if I can get out of this selection here. See, I'm in this. Wait, wait, am I in the right? Uh, oh, I'm in the RFA. <laughs> I'm in the RFA. Well, that's because I, um, I edited it, right? So load into the project. Well, it doesn't say to load it into the project and close yet. It doesn't say that yet. So I got to remember that. It's a little confusing because we have opened uh, the desk project. We have opened a new furniture generic model that we're creating. And we also just opened up the edit in place for the one of the desks that are inserted as a family in the project. Project desk. RVT. We opened the RFA to edit it. So uh, we made some settings to it. Um, so the legs and the hardware, even the faces of the drawers, do not need to show up in the plan. Click OK to close the dialog box. OK, well. If we went to view, um, where was it? All right, I'll do it like this. Load into project. Load it into the desk project. So it closes. Over existing for, for, uh, parameter values. All right, so as you can see, this view is set to course. The 3D view is set to course. And if you look, the handles aren't shown. The handles aren't shown because we edited the, um, we edited the family. Now we're still in the project. We're still in the project, and we don't have the family open again. But if we go to the project and look at it from, let's say, the east, um, and that's not a good uh, view because we can't see the, uh, we can't see it. But if we were to put a section in, let's go to, let's put a section in. Let's look at this from, um, let's go from either way, it doesn't matter. We're gonna see the, uh, the drawer handles. Let's look at it from the uh, east. So if I go to this view, and you can see the handles aren't shown on coarse. On medium, they're not shown. On fine, they're not shown. OK, now the plot thickens. Next, select the draw faces, then click the visibility settings tool. This geometry range 
is one foot to three foot, so it should display at medium and fine details, detail levels. Also uncheck the left right option and then click OK to close the dialog box. Okay, well we uh we we just did that. We're gonna do it again. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the 3D view, get all these views out of here. Go back to the 3D view, edit the family, modify tab. Uh, now I can't get what I wanted. Oh, select the desk, hold on. Select the draw faces. Well, this is the desk RFA. I'm editing it again. Select the draw faces. One, two. And click the visibility settings tool in the mode panel. This geometry range is one foot to three feet or 300 to 900 millimeters. So it should display at medium and fine details. Also uncheck the left right option and then click OK to close the dialog box. OK, so uncheck the left right button so it doesn't display in a left right view. And the detail levels, uh, this should not display uh, at medium and fine. So let's just keep that like that. Hit OK. Now let's just take a look down here. All right, so now, from any tab in the ribbon, choose Load into Project. And it defaults to the project that we have open, not the family that we're creating. Over an existing version and its parameter values. Choose the option to overwrite the existing version and return to the sample sheet view. Our face still open. I'm going to close it. Um, the RFA is still open. I'm going to close it. Return to one of the sheet views. This is the RVT. This is the RFA of it. Close that. This is the RFA of the desk. Close that. Uh, save the changes to it. Overwrite the changes, that's all right, yes. Um, sample sheet, we turn off 3D view. And this is a lot of, of uh, navigating around the platform. Just um, getting a view that you want, not overburdening it with a million views. All right, so we're back in the sheet view. You will now see that the appropriate geometry is displaying only at the most appropriate detail levels in each view. All right, so here's course. We don't see the drawers or the drawer handles. Here's medium. Well, we see the drawers. We don't see the drawer handles. And here's fine. We see the drawer handles and the drawers. So, what does that do for us? Well. It gives us the option of not displaying things in certain views and being able to control the visibility settings of the families while you're creating them so that they, when they come into a host project, um, their visibility is able to be controlled. Now, we talked about this a little bit. You can control visibility of these um, families and links and override them and have them be based on the visibility settings of the host uh, or the family itself. Uh, there's lots of different ways to override the visibility settings. Um, and that's the beauty of the open-ended architecture of, this, of the program. <coughs> All right, so we started a little bit with that one, but that's pretty much uh, the long and short of it for that particular exercise. Um, we need into using materials um, really quick. Now, materials are crucial to a family, but what are more often, well, but what are often more important are the shading settings and the transparency value of the material because they communicate much about the intent of your design in the early stages. 
cheating and transparency settings in the material dialog box. So if I was to go to uh, manage, and we're in the RFC now, you'll see the material dialog box. In addition, material options are often not easily created in Revit. Yes, a family can have a material parameter. However, expressing, expressing many different materials for visualization purposes is probably best left to visualization specialists who understand the subtleties of creating a compelling image and not just a rendering of a working model. It is unlikely they will be using Revit for this purpose. Right. I use Enscape or uh, Lumion uh, or Stingray, which is discontinued, or Revit Live or Adobe Photoshop. Uh, there's a million software packages, but I prefer Enscape. V-Ray has got a good one. V-Ray's got a good one, Enscape has got a good one, but this is best left for, uh, for visualization specialists. So, it's unlikely they'll be using Revit for this. Maybe a plugin. Beyond visualization, materials and Revit are used for a host of other things. All right. Graphic representation and construction documents and material takeoffs are two examples. If the materials in your families are something you will need to schedule a view graphically, it is a good idea to define them. Multiple materials can be assigned to a family. They are assigned based on model solids, so if you have multiple solids, sweeps, extrusions, and the like, each one can be given a unique material. You have two options to define a material within a family, both being handled in the solids object Properties shown in the properties palette. By default, the material sets are by category. Select this option and you can change the material to any material currently loaded in the family. Or you can load a new one from any material library. This is a great use for the family if you know the material is not going to change. Once by category is clicked, a gray button on the right side will appear. Select a small button on the material browser dialog box and the, and the material dialog box will appear. If you know that your casework is going to be anything but blonde maple, is not going to be anything but blonde maple, for example, go ahead and set the material within the family by associating a material parameter to the object by selecting the associate family parameter button. This option uses the tiny ellipsis to the right of the material field in the properties palette to define a new parameter. In this case, you can call the material something like casework material. If you were to use the same parameter, for all your casework families. Once it is placed in the model, you can change that material via the material browser dialog box, and it will update uh, all your casework families at once. Now, if I was to just go down here, cancel out of here, and go to, let me just grab this desk. Now, if you look in the properties palette of the desk in the project, there isn't a, pro a property for, for material. But if I come down to the type properties, the family, you'll see this type, and there's a few of them, um, does have a material applied to um, its body, its handle, leg, its top material. Now, if you look, there's a small box over here that lets you add another parameter, right? And I can call this one uh, material four. And it applies to materials and finishes. Hit OK. Hit OK. Hit Apply. It will make a... Uh, it didn't do it in the type. It didn't give me the parameter in the type. Oh, wait. It gives me equals. Wait, 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 wait. Did it categorize this correctly? So I screw up, we have to do it in the family. I think you have to do it in the family. So if I was to edit the family and select the top, the material right here is grayed out, but there it is, the associate family parameter. So create a new parameter, here it is, and call it material four. We have a coffee cup on the desk. Material for a type um, or an instance. So I hit OK. Material for hit OK. Now, if 
I load into project over an existing version, and I select it, I go to edit type. Well, there's material four. So that's basically the gist of it. So, but if you know, it's always, if it's a piece of casework, it's always going to be um, blonde maple. Well, then you can always set it like that. And um, you don't have to add another parameter, another parameter. You could change it by category. All the, all the uh, casework is now going to uh, be um, balsam wood. We're making a paper airplane to fly around the office, right? All right, so we're going to get into a lot of that a little more as we go through the exercises. And for experimenting by bringing these um, families in and seeing how they display and how they render, you're going to get a general sense of, of how that affects your project. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of settings, a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of overrides, and sometimes it could, it could be a little frustrating. But um, it's not something that's insurmountable. Okay, so uh, stay focused and don't be discouraged. Um, because we're going to be getting into the techniques um, in the next section. So I'm going to stop this one here. It's running a little bit long. Uh, we're already at 36 minutes. I just woke up, uh, so hopefully uh, the cobwebs are almost out. I'm going to grab another cup of coffee, and we'll, we'll continue on with the Reddit uh, exercises and see how far we can get before... Uh, Another project comes into perspective.